This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the first of our share-based payments. And the first of our share-based payments that we're going to go through and look at is your equity settled share-based payments. Now we introduced your equity settled share-based payments and here what we've got is just a bit of a recap of, of what happens. Uh, so remember, when you're looking at your equity settled share based payment, key bit that you do is you take the fair value of the option at the grant date. So if you're unable to measure the value of the goods or the services, which is common within exam questions, uh, then you will use the fair value of the option at the grant date. Okay. Uh, you then remember you take that fair value, don't we, to profit or loss as an expense to recognise the, the expense for the benefit we receive by the employee working for us. And we take that over the vesting period, don't we? Uh, and that is based upon the number of options that we expect to be exercised. So there is a little bit of judgment there, isn't there? Uh, estimating the number of people who we think will be there at the end of the vesting period. Uh, don't forget as well, that's thinking about the expense through profit or loss at the same time, don't forget there we have a credit entry, don't we, uh, within equity. Uh, so, so they're the key bits, aren't they? Fair value at the grant date, expense in it, straight line over the vesting period to profit or loss, based upon the number of employees who we expect to exercise the option. And we take the corresponding credit entry to equity. So most of the time that will be your other components of equity. So let's go through, uh, have a look at an example. Uh, the example that you've got, nice and straightforward, nothing too complicated, if we can just pull it up there, uh, is looking at a fair value equity settled share based payment scheme for services. So we shall deal with goods afterwards. And here I don't think it takes account of any changes within the expected number of employees. So we're just going to keep it very simple to start off with. So it wants us to look at the extracts that we see. Is it there within the statement of profit or loss? Uh, the statement of financial position for each of the three years ended. Is it December 2015 to December 2017? So what you've got there is it says Bree granted 10,000 equity settle uh, share based payments. So remember equity settled is looking there, isn't it, at your share options. So you need to be comfortable with the terminology. If it said 10,000 share options, that is the same as 10,000 equity settled share base payments. The number of employees that we have is there as 20 directors. Uh, that share base payment scheme started, so the grant date was on the 1st of January 2015. And the requirement wanted us to look at 15, 16 and 17. So three years of the scheme. And coincidentally, it says there the options vest on the 31st of December 2017, which is three years as a vesting period. Again, we said we're going to try and keep it simple. So none of the directors will leave over the three year period. So for each of the year ends 15, 16, 17, we're going to stick with our 20 directors, aren't we? You're then given information. Remember, we can't measure the value of the service provided to us by each of those 20 directors over the three years. So what we need to go through and do there is use the fair value of the option. Uh, as it is an equity settled share based payment scheme, which fair value do we take? The fair value, correct. Fair value at the grant date, don't we? So that there is 12, isn't it? Okay. Uh, the other ones that you've got there, 1350, 1380, and 1420. You ignore. Okay. It's a bit of a red herring. Yeah, you are not expected to use those figures. You take the fair value of the share option at the grant date and stay with that. Okay. So let's go through, have a play around with it, uh, draw up the answer. So what you've got there is it wanted us to work out extract, isn't it, 
from our statement of financial position for the years, was it 15, 16, and 17? And on the SFP, we have our entry, don't we, to our other component of equity, okay? Uh, and then is it within your statement of profit or loss? Within your statement of profit or loss, you have your expense. So for each of those, the figure to the other component of equity, the expense figure, we're going to draw up a separate working. So what we've got, if we go through there and look at year one, is that there as 2015. We need to look at the fair value that we need to recognise at the end of the first out of the three years. So we had, was it, I think it was 10,000 options that were granted to each of the 20 employees. The fair value at the grant date was $12. And we are at the end of the first year of a three-year vesting period, aren't we? So if we go through there and tap that into your calculator, you end up, don't we, with $800,000. So at the start of the year, nothing had been recognised as an expense or as any equity. So what we have there is that to get it to 800000 we need to credit our other components of equity and debit the expense, okay? Because we've gone from zero up to 800,000. So the first year of any scheme is, is normally pretty straightforward. It's usually when we move on to the second year that things get a little bit more challenging. So here we still have the same number of options in 2016. Uh, there's no change in the estimates of the number of employees because it said specifically that we expect none of the employees to leave. The fair value at the grant date is still 12. That won't change. We still spread it over three years, but be careful. We're at the end of the second year out of the three, aren't we? So if you tap that into your calculator, you have there, isn't it, the 1.6 million, okay? Vitally important that we appreciate there that what you're calculating is that the position, uh, the fair value to be recognised at a point in time. So at the end of the second year, we have recognised, is it 1.6 million? It's here where we need to be careful, isn't it? Because to get us to the 1.6 million from last year's closing figure of 800,000, you need to process the movement, isn't it? So whenever you're looking at the expense in profit or loss, the expense is the movement, isn't it? The movement from last year's figure to this year's figure. Okay, uh, then third and final year, what have we got? Is that the 2017, uh, the number of options that we have is there at 10,000. We have the same number of employees. That fair value at the grant date will not have changed. If you wanted to be really picky about it, you'd multiply by three over three because we are at the end of the third year of a three-year vesting period. Tap that into your calculator. I think you get, is it 2.4 million? So again, that's the amount of the fair value that we recognise at that reporting date. And again, I think you can anticipate what we're about to say I potentially don't even need to use any words, do I? Because what you've got there in profit or loss is the, the movement, isn't it? And the movement is from 1.6 up to 2.4. 
and that movement is 800,000, isn't it? So the movement every single year here has been 800,000. Don't expect the movement to be the same every single year. The reason why it is the same here every single year is because the number of employees has stayed the same at 20. In real world scenarios, and as we get to more exam scenarios, it will stay essentially not at the same figure of 20 and will change as we update our estimates of the number of employees who we expect to be there at the end of the vesting period and we adjust it each year. So that's going through there and looking at the first example. Uh, if we then move it on to have a look, is it at the second example, which is similar in difficulty, but ups it up ever so slightly because it looks at the number of options uh, that we expect to be exercised. So what we've got here, uh, based upon the, the number of employees, I should say, is again, it still wants us for the same extracts in profit or loss. And in our statement of financial position, uh, it wants us for two years. Is it December 14? And is it December 15? Okay. Uh, here it says 1st of January 2014. So the start of that December 14 year. Uh, Adam granted 20,000 share options. So again, just changing the terminology there. Share options are looking at your equity settled share base payments. Starts off there, is it with 10 directors, so 10 employees. Uh, the conditions attached to the scheme are that the directors must remain an employee for three years. Uh, the fair value of each equity settled share bait payment at the grant date was $60. So that's what we do, isn't it? We take the fair value of the share option at the grant date and spread that over that three-year vesting period based upon the number of employees expected to exercise the option. That's where it just gets a little bit trickier now because in the first year end that we're dealing with, December 2014, it says it is estimated that four directors would leave before the end of the three years. So we started off with 10. We think four will have left. So our figure that we recognise at the end of the first year is going to be based on, is it, yeah, six employees. However, December 2015, due to a downturn in the economy, uh, it was estimated that only one director would leave so with the downturn in the economy maybe there's not as many jobs out there and the directors have decided to stay so if we had 10 originally if we expect one to leave we're only left with no not eight nine okay yeah it's awesome you there how we can eight no nine ten less one nine yeah uh, and one would have left so we're left with the nine so when we're looking at the second year we base our fair value on the fact that we expect there to be nine directors. Okay, we don't go back and change 2014's numbers. Our expectation there was that four would leave. Uh, so that was an estimate and a judgment we made last year. And we don't change any estimates prospectively, do we? We, we make any changes in estimates in the current year and in subsequent years. So what we've got there, if we go through and have a look again at laying out our answer, we're looking there at the statement of financial position. Uh, is it there for two years, 2014 and 2015? We're looking at your other component of equity on the statement of financial position, aren't we? Uh, because we're looking at the shares to be issued, which go as an other component of equity. Statement of profit or loss is your expense isn't it and remember the expense is looking at the movement isn't it and again we shall do that uh, and help ourselves within the working uh, so what have we got uh, within our workings for the first year is it 2014 
Uh, here, I think we were granted, was it 20,000 options? Uh, we started off with 10 and we expected 4 to leave, didn't we? With regards to our employees. The fair value at the grant date was 60 and we are at the end of the first year of a three year vesting period aren't we okay so that should give you check on your calculator 2.4 million isn't it excellent uh, so there the first year is normally quite straightforward because when you recognize the other component of equity at 2.4 million the movement is the same because we've gone from zero at the start of the year up to a 2.4 million balance haven't we so there you have it again key bit that you've got now within this example is that we are taking account of the expected number of levers uh, let's move it on to 2015 for the second year so again we have your 20,000 options that's never going to change over the vesting period however We now expect there to just be one sole employee who leaves. So our expected number of employees who will be there at the end of the vesting period is 10 less 1, so, so 9. Uh, we multiply by $60, that fair value at the grant date. And don't forget to multiply by 2 over the 3. Yeah, because we're at the end of the second year out of the 3 year vesting period. Tap that onto your calculator quick. See how you get on. Should come to is it 7.2 million? So if we put the 7.2 million, that's the fair value that we need to recognize at that point in time, isn't it? If you're thinking about the journal entry, you need to take it from 2.4 to the 7.2 million, isn't it? That movement there. Is it four point eight million dollars? Okay, so in that second year end, we need to credit the expense with four point eight, credit the other component of equity with four point eight, and debit the expense with the four point eight. Uh, whilst with that, let's just let's just write in the debits and credits just to make sure that that, that you're happy with them. So in year one, so is that twenty fourteen. I debited my statement of profit or loss, credited my other component of equity. Is it with the 2.4 million dollars? Because that was the movement, wasn't it? Zero to 2.4. In the second year, I debit my statement of profit or loss. I credit my other component of equity. Remember that was with the movement, wasn't it? So that's with the 4.8 million. Okay, don't credit it with the full amount that you calculated at the end of the year. Is that the 7.2 million? No. Yeah, it, it's the movement, isn't it? We process the movement as our journal entry. Uh, everybody happy with those two examples? I think they're important in case they crop up within any exam question. Uh, what you've then got, just pulling it together, uh, finishing it off. If we go through that and have a look at the third and final example. Uh, that we have there on your equity settled. The key bit that you have with the first two examples that we looked at were to do with services, weren't they? This one here is to do with goods. And usually if you are issuing shares or share options as part of the purchase of goods, you can normally measure reliably the fair value of the goods given up. So 
here what we have. It says, explain how the transaction should be dealt with in the financial statements for the year ended December 2015. Caffili uh, purchased inventory. So you have the purchase of inventory. The purchase of inventory is looking at the purchase of goods, isn't it? It's not the issue potentially of shares or share options for the provision of services. It's here for the purchase of goods. And the key bit there is that we told that that cost is there, is it at 10 million? Okay, uh, so that there, that's what the goods cost. So I assume that that therefore will be their fair value, isn't it? Okay, uh, the goods were sold in November 2015 for 14 million. So uh, when we recognize that sale, we have a sale of 14 million. And um, what it says is Caffili had cash flow problems during 2015 and negotiated its supplier or with its supplier to exchange the goods for options on its shares. Uh, the shares had a market value of 1 or 11.5 million. Well, that's the market value, the fair value of the shares, not the fair value of the goods. Okay. Uh, IFRS 2 says that if you can measure the fair value of the goods, then you will use the fair value of the goods. So for the inventory, that's there. Is it at the 10 point million or 10 million? So what you've got there is that you are going to debit your purchases. Is that there with? The ten million dollars, and then you will credit your other component of equity with the ten million dollars. Okay, there we go. That that that's it. Uh, that debit to purchase will then form part, essentially, won't it, of of helping you to value your closing inventory at the lower of cost and net realizable value, if you so wish. Uh, if you're curious as to the eleven point five. Uh, with regards to the fair value or the market value of the shares, you know that's essentially what we're doing is we're giving the supplier some shares that are worth more than the value of the goods. And the reason behind that is because when the supplier has to then convert the shares into cash, there might be some transaction costs. So, you know, we're just giving them a little bit of benefit, a little bit of extra wealth uh, to, to cover them for any wealth that they may lose when they convert the shares into cash and incur transaction costs. But that's just a separate little bit aside. But other than that, I would dealt with everything now to do with your equity settled share based payments. So you shouldn't have any problems in answering any of the equity settled share based payments questions.